Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's Friday, it's nine o'clock. It's time for a review show revisited. This is where I take tricks and products and props that we've reviewed on this channel before and I go and perform them in the real world and I see if that, uh, that performance changes my review of a trick. And uh, you know, sometimes we'll take tricks that I've said are terrible and they end up being really good. Sometimes I'll take tricks that are really good or we thought they'd be really good and they end up going nowhere near as well as I thought. So it's kind of a really interesting concept. There's always going to be live performance footage, footage from actual gigging situations to watch. And uh, today we're going to be looking at three different uh, products. So we're going to be looking at three products um, that we've looked at in the past and we're going to be performing them in the real world to see what we think of them. So without further ado, let's have a look at the first product. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna be looking at today is Siri X Pro by Hanson Chen. Now, we looked at Siri X Pro a couple of weeks ago. If you don't know what Siri X Pro is, it is a, uh, it's, it's, it's basically a product that allows you to make a phone disappear inside a case or turn a phone into a glass prop. prop. And there's lots of different ways that you can actually do this. There's lots of different concepts that come with Siri X Pro. I like to do the basic method, which is, uh, where you take the phone, show the phone, show the case, put the phone in the case, hold it between their hands and it turns into a glass brock. I don't worry about the, uh, if, you know, if you know the routine, you'll know. Uh, you can have a bonus thing where the camera disappears. I tend not to do that. I like to have the magic happen in the spectator's hands. However, one thing that I have done is I've routined it in a way that makes it a little bit more logical for me. So what I'm doing is I'm doing at the end of a coin routine. Uh, so I'm doing a coin routine and the coin routine varies depending. Uh, a lot of the time it'll be a coins across or something. But I'm doing a coin routine and and then I'm going to say, look, there's too much to watch. There's too many there's too many things going on here. We've got all of this stuff going on with coins. So I'll tell you what we'll do. Let me get rid of one of the coin. Let me get rid of all of the coins. Let me just keep one coin. You hold on to that. Also, I'm going to need my phone. Can you have a look at the phone for me? Keep an eye on the phone. Keep an eye on the case. Hold on to the phone and the case. And then I say... Whatever happens to the phone, uh, to the to the uh, the coin happens to the phone, which sounds ridiculous, but it's true. I then uh, turn the coin into a see-through coin, and then when I go back to their hands, they see the cameras disappeared. I drop the phone out, and the phone is turned into a glass block, and everything is examinable. Uh, and that's for me a really nice way of doing it. It's a way of doing it, and it's getting stronger reactions than doing uh, like a, a jumbo coin production. Having that coin turn see-through and at the same time having the, uh, the, the, having the, um, the phone turn see-through, it kind of is very logical if that makes sense. Um, so I'm gonna play you some footage of me doing this. Now this is shot outside at a wedding. Uh, so this is a wedding. Uh, this is kind of the pre-dinner drink. Sorry, this is the uh, uh, the drinks reception before they go in for their uh, for their meal. Uh, and I'm performing. You know, I've been performing at this point for about an hour and a half. I think this was one of the last groups of people before I was leaving. And uh, and and you'll see me actually doing this. You'll see me doing this whole concept of making the coin disappear, uh, making it see through, making the, the, the you'll see the whole thing uh, in action. So you'll see exactly how it, uh, how how it plays. Um, let's have a look at that live performance footage now, and then I'll talk to you about what. Have you guys got a good imagination? Yeah. Good. Of course, we've still got that one coin that we moved away, so I'll do something with the phone and one coin. But you guys have got to be really observant. You've got to keep one eye on my phone, one eye on the case, one eye on me. Okay. You'll need an extra eye. You can kind of share communally. Yeah, exactly. She's sharing it with the camera. That's cool. That's cool. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Watch. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, that's okay. Okay. I'm ready for you. Have you ever helped a magician before? No. You're not helping one now, but that's <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this, watch. I'm gonna put the phone right here inside the case. Hold your hand out for me. Put your other hand on top so I cannot get to it at all. I can't cover it at all, that's it. You can move it down here, that's cool. Okay, we're good with that? Yeah. Now here's the thing, whatever happens, do you remember that coin that we put to one side? Yeah. Whatever happens to this coin, happens to the phone. There's a symbiotic relationship between the coin and the phone. So whatever happens to the coin, happens to the phone. It sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Now, this is an American coin. We've already talked about this. 
Do you know who that person is on the American coin? No, it's not, because this is American coin. History and geography, not your strong points. It's actually a close-up of the head of the Statue of Liberty. That's Lady Liberty. That's the new American Lady Liberty. Lady Liberty. Do you see the coin? Yes, I do. Do you see Lady Liberty? I see Lady Liberty. Watch. Do you see that? Two. Are you ready? Three. You see Lady Liberty is still there. What the? But we've taken the metal It's clear, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, my God. But here's the thing. I said whatever happens to this coin happens to the phone. Do you remember? So yeah. that's gone clear. Well, hang on a second. If you just lift up your hand, right there. look for the camera. Look for the camera. Lift up. <laughs> Do you see the camera? Yeah. It's gone. It's, it's gone. gone. And the reason is that phone has now. <gasps> no. No. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Where is the phone gone? Where's the phone gone? <laughs> Where's the phone? Where's the phone? See if it's in there. It's gone. Okay, so you can see from the reactions, it gets really killer reactions when that they genuinely expect the phone to be there. They don't think, and I, uh, there was one thing that I was a little bit worried about with this prop. And I was a little bit worried that because they were holding this phone in between their hands, would they think, oh, something's going to happen. I don't know what. And therefore, it diminished the moment where the, where the phone disappears. But that's not the case. They just don't see anything coming at all. Like, they don't ex expect what's going on. And I think part of the reason is they see the phone. They see it go inside the case. They're holding it between their hands. They can feel that phone inside that case, apparently. Um, and I said in the original review, I said, this is really good. This is how I'm planning on doing it. And I talked about the, the, coin, the coin thing. For me, this makes sense because I do a lot of coin magic anyway. And it kind of just make, gives it a logical reason as to why it's actually turning into a glass block. Or at least for me, it kind of makes it more logical, if that makes sense. Um, and, and doing it like this, it does. It gets a really great reaction. I just have the uh, the glass coin which we reviewed we reviewed these see-through coins in the show as well um and they're great and you should pick some up if you can but uh, i just have that coin in my uh right trouser pocket and i just grab it um when i've put the phone in their hand as i'm letting them see the uh uh the coin and i just rub it and it changes i do, do a thumb palm spellbound vanish uh, spellbound change sorry and then and then i go back and boom killer reaction i love siri x pro uh, the the i think we gave it a hundred percent that mark does not change. It is incredible. It is one of the com most commercial routines I've ever seen. I'm not taking anything away from Tobias's vanishing phone or, or dropped call because all of those are great in various different ways. But for me, if you only want one method to make a phone disappear, I have to say that this is the way to go because it is so unbelievably strong and the magic happening in the spectator's hands just is the icing on the cake and there's so many different ways that you can actually go with this product it's brilliant um so i highly recommend it uh you know it it, it it's worth the grade the grade we gave it was a very high grade and it stands up to that having now performed it in the real world i can tell you right now it is absolutely worth buying so we're going to have a look at that footage again. I'm going to do a commentary track over the top so you can just see what I was doing and why I was doing it. And, and we can talk about um, sort of angles and, and audience management and that sort of stuff. And then we'll get on to the, the next review. OK, so first of all, I want you to notice that there's several people filming with me when I do this trick. Now, that can happen an awful lot at gigs like this where you've got lots and lots of people filming you. Um, and, and I had literally about four or five people phone filming me. I, you can only see one, but there's others behind the camera as well. In fact, the footage that you're actually seeing now was airdropped to me from somebody who was filming me. So when that's the case, you want to make sure that the material that you're performing is angle proof. So they can't look back at it on camera a little bit later on and realize how it works. 
which is perfect for this because it is completely angle proof. Now notice I, I make sure that they can see that the phone and the case are there. I tell them keep one eye on the phone, keep one eye on the case, keep one eye on me, which is a really silly patter line. Uh, but what it does is it allows me to very cleanly show the phone and the case and make sure that people realize um, that everything is as it's appeared to be. Now, uh, I, bring the uh, I bring the coin out, I show the coin, and notice the moment where I say, do you know who that is? And she goes, statue, uh, she goes uh, Queen Elizabeth. Now, I could really take the mickey, but I, you know, I'd performed for these people for a little while, and I knew that the way that I went with it would be a lot better than kind of going full on. And I think that when you're performing, one thing you have to be aware of is you, get, you kind of have to be aware of the audience you're performing for and how, um, how you deal with them, if that makes sense. Uh, anyway, so you focus attention on the coin. When I'm doing a spellbound with this coin, I love bringing attention to, uh, to the uh, Liberty because when I do the change, they still see it there. Now notice I drew everyone's attention to that coin and then my other hand literally just went south into my pocket. Nobody saw that though because everybody was looking at the coin with the metal content gone. And then when they came back and I transferred it in my other hand, the coin had already been ditched. A lot of people say, how do you do a complete coin vanish? Well, the easiest way to do a complete coin vanish or ditch a coin is just to ditch it in your pocket when people aren't looking. I know it sounds, uh, it sounds, sounds simple, but that's what it is. You want to be just putting it in your pocket when no one's looking. That's all it is. So, um, yeah. Then you bring attention back to the phone. The phone turns crystal clear. And you can see from people's reactions. They, they, they buy into this immediately. Uh, I love using the coin. Uh, in order to set up the Omni phone. I think that that's a really nice way of doing it. It suits my character. It suits my style perfectly. Um, it just requires a little bit of misdirection. Notice uh, at the end of the routine, I put the phone back into the case and I put the case in my pocket. And if I put the, phone, the coin back into my pocket, I'm instantly reset for the next table, which is great. Perfect situation to be in. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be looking at is Out of This Zip Code by Eric Tate. Now, I reviewed this on a review show special. It was a Penguin Magic review show special a few weeks ago. And um, it was all about downloads that Penguin had bought out. And uh, one of the downloads that we looked at was this one. It was, uh, it was Eric Tate, Out of This Zip Code. And uh, I looked at it and gave it a really good review. I said it was very, very clever. It was a wonderful version of uh, Out of This World. Um, so, uh, so, you know, and I wanted to, but I wanted to try and make sure that I was correct about that. So I wanted to perform it in the real world. This footage was shot at a very loud gig. This was at, uh, uh, at the Park Lane Hilton um, in London at one o'clock in the morning. I was doing a gig. Uh, with Nemed and Kieran, Kieran Shepherd, who now works at Prop Dog and Nemed Phoenix. Uh, we were there doing a gig from, uh, I think, 11 o'clock until 2 o'clock in the morning or something stupid like that. And, uh, and it, was, it was very loud. The music was ridiculous. Uh, but there were lots of tables dotted around. And this guy came up to me towards the end of the gig. And he's like, hey, show me something. I want to see something else. He said, show me something amazing. And uh, I'd shown him some stuff earlier on. And I said, you want to see something amazing? Okay, I'll show you something amazing. And uh, I sat down at this table with him. There were a couple of other people behind me watching from behind, which is great with this routine because there's no angle issues really to speak of. However, there is one thing that's worth noting. Uh, I did talk about this on the review and you're going to see this in the footage in a minute. I talked about how you have to do a Hofsinger spread call and, and Eric teaches this in great detail. And I'm pretty good at a spread call. I'm not bad. And you saw on the uh, studio performance, I, I did the, uh, you know, I, I did the, uh, I did, I did the method, the culling method, and everything was absolutely fine. It was great. Sitting down like this with somebody sort of next to me, I was worried that the, that the cull would not work as well as I wanted it to. So I talked on the original review about another method that I wanted to try and look into to see if it would work which was uh, going to be trying to do a pseudo triumph style routine where I'm mixing the cards face up into face down. Um, and, uh, and then after mixing them face up into face down, I spread them out and they're all sorted out the right way. 
and uh, you know, kind of going down the hook line of, I'm gonna show you the difference between magic and influence. Now it changes the actual premise of, of Eric's routine, because if you do that, you can't pretend that they've memorized the deck. So what you have to do instead is you have to say, look, let me try and influence you. Um, but it allows you to do the move without needing to do the move, if that kind of makes sense. Well, that's what I did in this, inv this situation. Uh, and it worked really, really well. I'm going to show you the performance footage for this. Um, it is noisy. I'm going to try and drop the audio down a little bit so you can hear everything. I'm going to try and clean this up a little bit, but it is very noisy environment. So hopefully you can hear. Uh, but if not, if you if you know the performance, you'll you'll know what I'm doing, and you can see you can see things from his point of view. But I'm going to play that performance footage for you right now, so you can see the reaction. Mix them up, give them a really good shot. It's important that you realise we're in not any particular order at all. You happy? Cool. Now here's the thing, Barry. I'm going to show you the difference between magic and influence. First of all, magic. You shuffle the cards, yeah? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give these cards very special shuffles. This card, this is called a drunken dum dum shuffle. Because if you ever shuffle like this, you're either drunk or dum dum dum. It's a technical term for it as well, it's called a mech. But when you do this and you've got some cards face up, some cards face down, face up, face down, the, the cards are all mixed up all over the place, right? So now, when you look at the cards, you've got cards back to face, you've got cards face to back, you're looking just the right part in the middle with the face to face. Now, to be honest with you, how long do you it can take you to sort those cards out so they're all facing the right way? A couple of minutes? If I told you I could sort them out in one second, would that be good? <laughs> what about if I told you I could sort them out in one second without even touching the deck? Go for it. God. <laughs> right? But that's magic, Barry. That's not that's not influence. So we're gonna try and we're gonna try and experiment in influence, okay? Okay, okay. So I'm gonna go through the cards, just say stop. Stop. There. Do you want that card or that card? That one underneath. That one there. Yeah. So we'll take that one. It's uh it's, don't worry about what the value is, it's a red card. I don't want you to feel influenced. I'm going to slowly spread through the cards. I want to touch the red card. Touch the red card on yeah. there? Touch what you think is a red card. Touch the red card. Yeah, have another. Touch another red card. And another red card, Barry. One more. One last one. Yeah. Make sure I don't switch those. These are your choices. I'm going to put them right there. One, two, three, four, five. Did you fit the No, no. It was... I'm, I'm going to take a black card out as well. We're going to put a black card there. Okay, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm going to slowly spread through from the same place. Such a black card. And again. And again. Make sure I don't cheat. That's fair. Now, think about this. At the beginning, you shuffled the cards. I did. And I had you touch cards. And you could have touched any cards you wanted to do. Nobody can approach you to touch one card or another. No. You can touch any card. Did you feel influence by it? So if I told you where it was, would you believe me? Well, let me see. I would I mean, say no, but this I think I'm about to be... Could be a fluke. <laughs> that could be a fluke, Barry. Even, <laughs> even this could be a fluke. But when you see this, you start questioning reality. When you see this, you start freaking out. And when you see this, I've got to tell you, that's the weirdest thing I know I've got to say. Uh, <laughs> well done, my friend. <laughs> Oh, that was entertaining. So there you go. I mean, after I performed that, uh, he told me afterwards that he said that was the best card trick I've done all night. And I'd done my card in the box routine for him. I'd done my reversey routine uh, to a group of people that he was part of. Uh, I'd done a couple of other card routines as well. And he said that was the best card routine that I did that night, um, which 
speaks volumes. Uh, you know, it's, it's great. It really, really is. It's very engaging. It's the best version of Out of This World I've ever seen. Um, it's so strong. It's so strong. Um, and, and also, it doesn't drag on too long. That's the problem. Did I say Out of This World? It is out of this world, isn't it? Yeah, out of this world, yeah. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's so strong. The problem with out of this world is a lot of the time it's too long and boring and people switch off. And I think that's why a lot of magicians don't do out of this world. Well, Eric's changed the game with out of this zip code and, 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 and it's just fantastic. It really is. Uh, I did get some more footage of this routine as well. I'm going to play you one more video of me performing it. Now, this is at a charity event uh, that I did a few weeks ago. And this is uh, the last trick of a set. I'd finished my set and they said, hey, can you do one more thing? I was like, yeah, I can do one more thing. And I decided to try and do this because I thought, I wonder if this will work in a big table environment. It's worth, and, and I do that an awful lot. I test tricks out in different ways and see if they work and see if they don't. And that's really the best way to find out if material works for you or not. So I didn't know if this was going to work. My thought process with this was it's more of a mix and mingle trick and bar trick that sort of thing would it work on a uh, on a big table so they asked me to do one more thing and I was like yeah okay I'll do one more thing for you and I did this and uh, it got just as good a reaction from this from this table even though they're there I think I think um, I haven't seen the footage yet but I'm 99 percent sure food got bought down part way through or something like that but you'll see you'll see the performance and you'll see the reactions that you get from it. it's actually a really good reaction uh, so let's have a look at that footage as well very quickly so guys I'm going to show you the difference between magic and influence this is going to be a really interesting thing first of all let me give you an example of magic the trick that I did earlier on I took the cards and I shuffled them face up into face down didn't I and I took some cards face up, some cards face down, and I mix them face up into face down. And like I said, that is called a mess. Now sometimes when I do this, people say you're not really shuffling them face up and face down. It's why I'm doing a little like this. You can see that the cards are being shuffled face up into face down. Is that fair? Now we've got cards back to face. Now you've got cards face to back. In the middle, if you look at just the right spot in the middle, you can see these cards back to back and face to face. If I asked you to sort them out, we've already established it will take a while. Magic looks like this. You stamp your fingers, they're all facing the right way. That is magic. It's about doing the impossible and making the impossible possible. But I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to try and influence you to do something. And I guarantee you, at the end of the night, this is what you're going to be remembering. Do me a favour, Marilyn, just say stop. There. Let's take that card and look at it. It's a red card. Marilyn, there are 26 red cards in this deck and there's 26 black cards. There's jokers in this deck as well. We'll say that the jokers are black cards as well. Marilyn, as I spread through slowly, touch a card. You're going for a red card, even though you can't see it. Touch a card. And another. And another. One more. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure I don't switch them. Make sure I don't do anything weird with them. I'm just going to put them there. Is that fair, guys? Yeah. Actually, we need one more. Touch one more. That's fine. That one there. So, we also need a black card. Let me just grab a black card out of here. There we go. We'll go for that one. So, same thing. Touch a, touch a card so I slowly spread it. And another. And another. And one more. Yeah. Make sure I don't switch them. Make sure I don't do anything weird with them. You know, actually, we've got, we did five there, so we'll do five there. Touch one more. Yeah. Now, think about this for a minute. And guys, I really want you to think about this. Marilyn shuffled the cards before we begin. You didn't shuffle like that. You gave it a bit of a rubber shuffle, Marilyn. You shuffled the cards. Didn't you? And they were in a random order. And then I asked you to touch cards, and you touch those cards, and you touch those cards. Did you feel influenced in any way? No. Then this is going to be the most amazing thing you've ever seen. Very quickly, because they're here, look. First of all, red and black. Red and black. Red and black. This is incredible, and I have no idea how you did that.
Okay, so to sum it up, Out of the Sip Code is brilliant. You guys need to buy it. It's brilliant. It's a very cheap download, but it's awesome. And the reactions are great. I mean, that's all I can say about that. I'm upping the rating by 10%. I gave it 100%. I'm upping it to 110% just because it's killer. I've used it now about 30 or 40 times in many, many different environments. It's so good. It is the best out of this world there is. I haven't done out of this world for years for various different reasons. However, every single one of those reasons are eliminated by the clever routining and the genius thinking of Eric Tate. So it's great. I'm going to do a uh, commentary track over the top of the performance just so you can see what I was doing, why I was doing it, and just understand my thought process behind it while I was performing it. And then we're going to have a look at one last routine. So the first thing that uh, I should tell you is just before the camera rolled, I gave the lady on my left or your right the pack of cards to shuffle. I made a very really big deal of her shuffling the cards, which is obviously very important for this routine. Um, now, I kind of didn't plan on going into this trick. Uh, and when I actually started going into it and I realized what I needed to do, I kind of thought, oh, I've done a triumph routine for them earlier. At the beginning of my set, I've done like three tricks uh, before this one. I, I opened with a triumph routine, which is why I was actually talking there about, hey, you've seen me shuffle the cards face up into face down. I kind of glossed through this purely because they'd seen a similar effect before. Even though they'd seen a similar effect, it still got a great reaction. Now, the reason I'm doing a commentary track over this is because there's a couple of things that happened during the performance of the routine that I think are worth actually noting as part of a commentary track. So first of all, obviously, we're into a situation now where I've done the opening sort of triumph type sequence. And as I said earlier on, you don't always have to do that triumph type sequence, but I think there's certain situations where it's actually better than trying to do a cull. When you're trying, when you're performing to a big group of people like this, managing the angles on a cull would be more difficult um, than sort of doing mix and mingle or whatever. So in this situation, I find it better to do that. Now, I want you to notice, anybody who's got this download will understand the problem that I had here. Um, I'm spreading through and I'm going very slowly, just like Eric said, and I'm having people pick cards. Now, I ideally want to go for five cards, because like Eric said on the download, I think that's the perfect amount. But I was a little bit worried after she picked the fourth card that we're a little bit too close to being in a bad situation without giving too much away. So... I, I just put the four cards down and I was like, actually, can we get one more? Let's do five. And then that allowed me to spread from the beginning of the deck again to get the fifth card. Um, that And then I had to do the same thing in the second phase. I, I, I've had this a couple of times, actually, where even though I'm doing everything that Eric says and I'm spreading very, very slowly, um, I do get myself into a situation where I'm a little bit concerned that the trick might not work as well as it should do if I continue spreading. So... Every time I've done this, I've gone into this kind of scenario where in order to get five cards, I put the four cards down or the three cards down and then I get them to pick one more. And that always works really, really well. Um, the other thing that I want you to note in this performance that's really, really important is I'm looking out the corner of my eye. And when you're doing close-up magic, you always need to make sure that you're looking out the corner of the eye. I realized that their food was coming and was going to sit down. And I could tell very quickly that there were members of waiting staff standing around me waiting to put their food down uh and i didn't want to annoy the waiting staff that's something you never want to do so i kind of rushed this whole thing at the end here uh, if you compare the revelation here to the revelation when i was actually performing it to the other guy uh in in the other video you'll see that i kind of rushed this but that's because i can see the food's coming down and i just want to kind of finish the trick off and be done with it and even then it gets a great reaction and i think that's the important thing that you need to understand this isn't an opening routine but it's one that will get a really good reaction and i was nicely surprised that it works as well on a banquet style table as it does uh it's something that's very clear to everybody around the whole table uh which is perfect it really is so yeah i hope that helps it's a great routine and it's highly recommended Okay, so the final routine that we're going to be having a look at is Jamie Dawes' Guess. Um, so Jamie uh, brought out Guess with Kmart Magic. We reviewed it on the Craig and Ryan Review Show a little while ago. Ryan performed it and raved about it, and I raved about it as well. Uh, said it was really, really good. Interesting hook, uh, because it's all based around uh, uh, Guess Who. And uh, there's lots of different options in terms of how you can perform it.
Um, just, it's, it's not just one routine. There's two distinct phases, but then there's other phases you can add on. There's other things that you can do with it as well. It's, it's actually really flexible in terms of everything that you can do. So we wanted to see what it would be like in the real world. Um, would it be too procedural? Would it not be as interesting as we thought it would be? Um, the man for the job was Ryland. Uh, because he's the one that learned the trick in the first place. And also, my eyes are terrible. And he's got those marked systems down on guess. Pat, like he's got it brilliantly. So um, uh, he was the man for the job. So we sent him out to a family restaurant. He went and, uh, and performed this to a group, of, uh, a group of people. This is what happened. This is the new game of Guess Who. It's the travel edition. So you can take it in your Now in, in here, I have got... I've got, um, I've got girls, I've got Isabel, Grace, Rachel, Sophia and Lisa, Sean, Ben, Yusuf and Oliver. Now we'll do some proof of the girls first, and we'll put the boys aside for one minute, okay? I want you to mix the, the girls up. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. Two distinct phases and both phases got a really great reaction. Um, one thing that I will say, uh, and you saw that the reaction was great, and, 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 and this um, guest deserves every single percentage it got from us because it is absolutely brilliant and it's well worth its weight in gold. And it's a nice little thing that you can bring out and you can do in pretty much any environment and people absolutely love it. One thing I found interesting, Ryland did this three times at this particular gig to three different groups of people. We only filmed it to this group. <coughs> but Ryland did it three times. And um, the other two times, there was a different out on the second phase. And I don't want to say what the out is, but the out that was picked the other two times uh, got a better reaction. I'm not saying that the out that he got on this performance got a bad reaction. It didn't. It got good reaction. And I actually quite like the fact that you know, he's got one extra card and it's the, uh, you know, and it's the card of the person they named. But there is one particular out, in my opinion, uh, that's, that's the best out for the second phase of guess. Uh, so that's something that's worth, worth noting. At least I, I, that's what I found, in my opinion. But uh, you can't deny the fact that the reactions are great. 
You know, it's got, it's like I said in the original review, it's got a great hook line. People really enjoy, uh, it brings back people's childhood memories, but then you're doing these really killer routines. And once again, Ryland studied the whole of the guest download. He prefers the patio force uh, 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 sort of handling for phase one that um, uh, Liam suggested in the download, which is absolutely fine. I actually prefer Jamie's original um, handling of the first phase. But I suppose that's what's nice about the routine. There's so many different options. You know, Ryland likes doing it one way. I actually prefer looking at it the other way. It's down to the individual performer. And I can't deny that the reactions that Ryland's getting for this are really, really good. I saw him do it to uh, his teachers. So when I was picking him up from school uh, and, and there were like three or four teachers around uh, on this desk, on this outdoor sort of, there's an outdoor bench thing and he was performing and all of his teachers were there and he was doing this guest thing and, um, and they were just freaking out. They were like, what? No, that makes no sense. It's ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's killer. It's killer. If you want a nice piece of mentalism that's going to have a really great hook, it's, it's great for kids, it's great for adults, it's great for a family audience. You can play it in so many different ways. There's lots of different options. This is absolutely one you want to go for. As per normal with the review show revisited, I'm very quickly going to just do a commentary track over Ryland's performance just so I can point out some things during the performance um, that I think were quite good that he did. And then we'll come back into the studio and wrap everything up. So, like I've said before, one of my favourite things about this routine is the hook. Uh, it's very believable this this could be a travel edition of Guess Who. And everyone's heard of Guess Who. Kids have heard of it. Adults have heard of it. Everyone's heard of it. So it absolutely makes sense. Also, the cards... Uh, are, are interesting from a mentalism point of view. It's not a card trick. It's not your typical mentalism trick. So it creates intrigue right from the very, very beginning. Um, so generally, as a rule, this is a two-phase routine. Obviously, the instructions have more phases, but it's a two-phase routine. And one of the strongest things about this particular trick is the marking system. The marking system is genius. Unless you know what you're looking for, you could look at the back of the cards all day and not see anything. So it allows the freedom of choice with this first thing here where Ryland's having the cards picked, showing everyone the card, and then getting it shuffled back into the pack as well. Um, personally, and I told him this after the performance, I would have let the spectator take the card out and show it around while he turns around because, um, you know, I, I, I just think uh, that's a little bit cleaner so they don't think that you're glimpsing anything, but it's a small point. So now this is the patio force. And if you don't know the patio force, it's one of the cleverest forces that there is because it's going to ultimately allow the spectator to feel like they found their own card, even though they shuffled the cards, even though the cards are face down and they shuffled them and they're making all the choices or they feel like they're making all the choices, they have found their own card. And and that's why Ryland likes this phase more than Jamie's original phase. This is the bonus handling from uh, from Liam that's on the tutorial. And I understand where he's coming from because it is very strong. Think about it from a spectator's point of view. They pick a card, they look at it, they put it back in the pack, they shuffle, the cards are laid down on the table, they decide which cards to eliminate, and they're left with one card, and it's the card that uh, that they selected. And you can see from the reaction immediately, I mean, it's a, it's a coincidence trick, but it's, it's really strong, it's really, really powerful. Uh, and then one of the nice things about guests is you can immediately go into the second phase, uh, which uses the boys, and uh, this is basically a very clever very, very clever multiple out system. Um, <clears throat> I don't think we talked about this on the review, but Jamie talks about it in the tutorial. Uh, they feel like they're having a bigger choice than just four cards. Because of all the different cards in play, it feels like they're having a bigger choice. I know it sounds crazy, but it really does. And then you've got that, which makes a really nice finale. And look at the guy to the left of uh, Ryland. As soon as he sees that card come out, uh, and he realises exactly what's going on. It's an incredible moment. As I say, it's not the strongest out, but it's still um, really, really strong. So there you go. It's it's a great trick. It's highly recommended. It's very easy to do. And even if you don't do any mentalism, um, this has got such a quirky charm to it that I think a lot of people will find a place for it in their act. 
So there you go, guys. That is another a review show revisited in the bag, as Ryan would say. Thank you once again for uh, tuning in. I am really enjoying putting these together. It's really nice to actually go out into the real world and take the stuff that we've reviewed and, uh, and actually perform it in the real world and see how that actually affects uh, our original reviews. And I genuinely think we're the only review show that's doing this. You know, and I'm, I'd be more than happy, like last week when I changed my mind about the Doozy deck, I would be more than happy to change my mind about any negative review that I've ever given anything. Because I love it when I perform magic in the real world and it kills. So uh, I'm having a blast putting these together. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it as well. Don't forget, if you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. If you want to see more videos from Ryland, go check out The Kid Magician. Uh, Ryan and the Kid Magician on YouTube and uh, yeah I'm going to be back this weekend remember we've got eight videos over a weekend Saturday we've got shorts at two uh, we've got a uh, magic live at six we've got an honest trailer at 12 and at nine o'clock we've got talk magic and then again the following day at uh, 12 o'clock we've got a Q&A two o'clock we've got short six o'clock we've got a live and then at nine o'clock we've got a review show special Thanks once again for watching. You guys are absolutely amazing. I'll see you again. Have a great day. My name's Craig from Magic TV.